If you're just joining us, we are minutes away from launch. Here's the flight profile for the New Shepard vehicle. Starting at T minus two minutes and 30 seconds is when we enter into auto sequence. This is when the team in mission control essentially becomes hands off. The vehicle becomes autonomous. The countdown to engine ignition is at T minus zero, followed by throttle up, and the vehicle lifts off the launch pad to begin its journey. Around one minute into flight, we reach max Q. That's where the vehicle experiences its maximum dynamic pressure from the atmosphere. New Shepard will throttle back the engine as it passes through this point. After about two minutes, the BE-3 engine shuts down and we reach MECO, or max main engine cutoff. At this moment, the payloads on board will begin to measure microgravity. This is followed shortly after, at about two and a half minutes, by separation of the capsule, pushed gently away from the top of the booster as it makes its way to apogee, the highest point in the flight. Now we're in free fall and the payloads are in full swing until the vehicle begins to encounter the atmosphere once again. Apogee for both the capsule and the booster happens around four minutes into flight. As the booster begins to descend and re-enter the atmosphere, its fins will deploy to help guide and steer it back to the landing pad. The drag brakes deploy, increasing the rocket's surface area and slowing it down. The BE-3 engine then restarts, really decreasing the speed to just a soft hover as it finds its mark over the landing pad. Its landing legs deploy, and it will gently set down. Back to the capsule, it's much slower to re-enter due to its shape. As the capsule makes its way back into the atmosphere, drogue chutes deploy, followed by the mains. These parachutes are reefed, or gathered in, and slowly released to help reduce the loads on the vehicle. Just before touchdown, the capsule landing systems will engage, sensing the distance above the ground and firing that terminal decelerator system, which kicks up a big poof of dust in the West Texas desert and slows the capsule down for a soft landing. Okay, I see that we are in a hold. We're gonna to toss it back to the rocket on the pad. All right, our hold has been cleared, and we are gearing up to launch NS-23, our New Shepard payload flight. We are going to get ready for the bit checks coming up next. All right, there you see the launch gantry retracting. We're gonna get ready for our built-in test checks, our bit checks, and make sure all of the subsystems on the rocket are ready to go.
There you see the aft fins rotating. Those fins at the base of the booster help direct the vehicle on ascent and descent. There you see the engine nozzle gimbling. Now that engine gimbals to help maneuver the rocket as it flies. We're also keeping an eye on the pressure and the temperature in the propellant tanks. Those need to stay in the start box or the green zone for all of these different variables. All right, everything looking good with the rocket. It is time to hand it off to Mission Control. Let's launch New Shepard. T minus 16, guidance internal. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Command engine start. Two, one. Engine. Mission control confirms New Shepard has cleared the tower and is heading to space. Now you can see on the lower side of your screen that we're gaining speed. As New Shepard gains altitude, the atmosphere gets thinner. The bar on the left shows the vehicle's ascent. Now, we actually started at about 3,700 feet MSL. That's how far above mean sea level we are out here at launch site one. That BE N3 engine throttled up as we're going to push up to max Q. Again, that's the point where the aerodynamic stress on the vehicle is at its maximum. We're going to throttle back and then continue on up to space. It appears we've experienced an anomaly with today's flight. This was unplanned and we don't have any details yet, but our crew capsule was able to escape successfully. We'll follow its progress through landing. As you can see, the drogues have deployed and the mains are going to be pulled out next.
All right, the mains are out. You see that they're reefed. They're going to be expanding. As the mains inflate, the capsule will stabilize. That's looking like a successful execution for the crew capsule and escape system. and the crew capsule continuing to descend under its three main chutes. You can see those West Texas mountains in the background. As we come down towards the desert floor, we're going to expect that retro thrust system to fire. Again, that will take out most of the energy in the landing in addition to the parachutes. You'll see it kick up a big cloud of dust out there in the desert. There goes the retro thrust system. You can see how our backup safety systems kicked in today to keep our payloads safe during an off nominal situation. Safety is our highest value at Blue Origin. It's why we built so much redundancy into the system. We're going to close out the webcast for today. We'll share more information about the flight on Blue Origin's Twitter feed as we can. Thank you for joining us for today's webcast.